Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. Unreal Concepts, a dynamic, data-driven hotbar. Unreal Concepts are a way of just simply showing a concept inside of Unreal Engine 4. This is not going to be a complete project or a complete system. This is just going to be showing how something may work. Let's get started. Our example here is a dynamic, data-driven hotbar. Maybe something you might see in a massively multiplayer online game. Or even something as simple as like Overwatch, which has a few buttons. It has a basic layout, such as a left and right button, and then maybe some ultimates and things like that. But not every character has the same buttons, same skills, or even the same amount. Some of them are missing. So you want to drive that dynamically with data based on the player. If I show this example, what we're going to see at the bottom of the screen is 12 hotbars. And I've got them labeled with numbers and a few icons in them. All this information, the number of bars that are driven, drawn, the number for the index, the icon, and even the name which isn't displayed is all driven by data and is all user adjustable. Let me show you. So we have here like our number of buttons. If I change this to something like five and hit play, you notice we have five buttons. I could change this to seven or eight. We now have eight buttons. And it's going to fill them out based on the skills that we have set up for the player. Let's go back to 12 and make it easy on me. Now after that we have a player hotbar. This is the index number of our skills that the player has on their hotbar. As you can see here, I have 0, 1, 0, 3, and 4. Now this is referring to my skills. Skills is an array of skills that I've created it can be in an external file, it can be wherever you want, but for this example I'm using it as an array that basically holds my skills. These are the skills that are accessible in the entire game. It is our database of skills. And it contains a name and an image. It can of course contain more based on your requirements, but for example we just need a name and an image. I don't even need a name technically. But I can set up all of my skills in here, as you can see on this list, I can even add new ones. So let's go ahead and add a new one. Let me go ahead and add a sixth member here. And I'll name this one um, Dire Bear, because why not? And I'll go ahead and give this one a picture of, um, I guess we'll go with this, Bad Pylon. So now we have a new skill. And I could assign that to my player. So let's say my player, this is skill number five, wants that play, wants that skill. If I run them now, you'll show nothing here. I could have something set up where you can assign keys based on a controller, for example, like Elder Scrolls Online, and it uses the gamepad, or maybe you have drag and drop from a skill list. It really doesn't matter how you do this, it's up to your game. For our purposes, I'm going to go ahead and assign it to skill zero. So let's say our player has learned it, and it's now on their first slot. That's going to be skill five on slot zero. Now when I run the game, it's already there. It's set up. Everything is being driven dynamically. My interface is being created dynamically and it's filling everything out. Now if we go back to here, we'll find hotbar and this hotbar is just a uh, placeholder that I'll show you how to use shortly. So let's run over the code on how this works. I have two things that determine what we're going to use. The first one here is a UMG widget I'm calling dynamic hotbar button. This one's pretty simple. We have an overlay so that I can stack things on top of each other. I have an image. Now this image is this background. That is why when I run this, these blank ones have this little red border. It's to indicate that I have a hotbar there but nothing's assigned to it. It's personal preference. On top of that, I have a background image. This background image is where we're going to fill in the icon that you see for each button. And then I have a text block I simply have in the top right corner called this text block so I can assign our number. Again, everything's personal preference. I could add another one at the bottom and fill in the name of the skill, for example. Inside of our graph, it's pretty simple. I only have one thing set up. I have this text. If we go back here, we have this text right here. 
bound to a variable called this text. It's simply an externally accessible and editable variable. So when I spawn this widget, I can set it at runtime. We have this image. It's the same thing. At runtime, I'm going to set this. And then we have our background image and we have our image itself, which is just our border. Let me, let me rename that um, to make things simpler and spell it properly without the colon. Okay, huh? Border image one. There we go. That was weird. There we go. It's called border image now. So now we know this is the border image. We can ignore it. I just named it. Now we know we can ignore it. This right here is a binding to our background image. Get background brush. So whenever I change our image itself, which I do at runtime during creation, it's going to go ahead and set this image in the background. Now, what do I mean by setting at runtime? Inside of our dynamic hotbar, this is our main user interface for our player. This is our dynamic hotbar down here. This is pretty simple. If you notice, it's just a uniform grid panel. That's all it is. If you notice, there's no icons under it, no images. I have nothing set up already. I just have our dynamic uniform grid panel I've called hotbar. When this item is constructed, I'm calling a function called fill in buttons. I made it a function so I can make it cleaner. By making this a function, I have access to local variables. And when I'm running through a loop to create all of my buttons, I don't have to worry about universally accessible variables screwing up my actual event graph. So how do we make this work? Well, like I said, we're creating buttons dynamically at runtime. We can ignore all of this code. We're going to ignore all this for now. What matters is our creation of our widget code. Now you may know, notice this, and this is normal. This is the normal code to create a widget. This is the same code you'd use in your player or your level blueprint to create your HUD in the first place. You simply use this to create additional widgets, which are my buttons, and then I add them as a child to the uniform grid panel. And then the uniform grid panel handles the layout based on how I set it. Now, when I refer to setting things at runtime, when I said that we set the text block here based on this binding and the background image based on this binding at runtime, what we're doing is we're setting a variable in here, expose on spawn, and an image, expose on, whoop, this image, expose on spawn. What that does is when you create your widget, anything set to expose and spawn shows up during the creation node. You can see I can now create this text and this image that will go on my dynamic button. And what I'm doing for that is setting the index of our loop. So basically 0, 1, 2, 3. As I'm looping through, I'm setting the number here. And then I'm setting the image based on our skills, based on the index from the player's hotbar. That's it. This is the actual hard part of the code. And as you can see, it's very simple. This is what's dynamically creating our widgets. Now, of course, you need to add them, which is what this is here. And this one's really simple. We're taking the locally created button, the button I created right here, and I've saved to a variable locally. And we're adding that to our hotbar. And remember, our hotbar is just a uniform grid panel, and that's all it is. It can have children. After we've added it, since I'm using a uniform grid panel, a uniform grid panel uses horizontal rows and vertical columns to determine where it goes. I'm simply setting the column in here to be the same as the index of my bar. So as it goes through, it's going to create our first button here in the background, set the text and the image. Then it's going to talk to the button, the uniform grid panel hotbar add it to here as a child, and then it's going to set its column based on this number here. So column zero, column one, column two, column three, et cetera, et cetera. If I wanted a vertical bar, for example, I could set the row. So let's actually show that. Let's do set row. And of course, because it has a target of our grid panel, let's just copy this and paste it. We'll make it easier on me. Change this. We'll do set row. This should look very weird, by the way. So let's see what happens. We'll drag this in and we'll hit play. 
and you'll notice we now have everything in a vertical row. It's only stacking to this size because I've designed it like this. Let's change it to size to content and hit play. And you'll notice it now is bigger. Of course, it's going off the screen because it's at the bottom. That's easy enough. We'll just take our hotbar and we will, we will carefully try to drag this up. Oh, there we go. We'll drag our hotbar up here. We'll hit play. And there we go. We now have a vertical hotbar using all the same dynamic driven. How it looks doesn't matter. How it looks is all driven by your basic parent, which is my hotbar panel. I could actually put this all inside of a horizontal or vertical box and stack things together so it didn't have any form of automatic organization. It's all up to you. The point of this video is to show you we are creating things dynamically. We're creating this entire interface because you can see here there's nothing. We're creating this entire interface dynamically. We're using data. In this case, we have a variable called the player hotbar, which simply holds which skills they have. And keep in mind, we can have more skills. Here's, I'll go all the way up to 12. And then we can start filling in one and one and five and four here. Whoops, we'll go five, five here. Now we have 12 of them set up. Let me go ahead and take my, this and turn it back into a horizontal mar. And then we'll run it. And you'll notice now I have all 12 of them set up, all based on just the numbers. So the player gets something new, the player rearranges their skill bar. All you have to do is make sure you rearrange this one variable to properly pull in the IDs based on our skills, and you set things up. You have new skills added to the game, you simply add them to your list, your designer fills them in properly, you now have new skills. This can all be driven by external files, CSV files, data tables. As long as you can get access to this information and then you can, using that information, you could pull in your appropriate text, images, things like that. Here's an example. Let's wrap this up, just showing a little bit of a change. Here's my button. Let's see how hard this will be to do. Let's grab another text and drop it into there. We're gonna make this text centered at the bottom. Uh, let's see, in the middle, centered at the bottom in the middle. Let's see what happens when we hit play. And we have some text there. Okay, so we have some text showing up in our button here. And do, 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 we wanted that set at the bottom. There we go. That's what I wanted, centered at the bottom. Okay, so we have some text centered at the bottom. And you can see it's running on everything now. We're going to name this one to the, um, we'll go with, this is the, this, uh, we'll call this one the name text block and we'll set it up as a variable we'll go into our graph and we'll make a new variable we'll call this one the name text we should probably rename this text to something more appropriate like activation number skill number hotkey number something like that but for example we're just going to do this and we have name text we make sure we're going to make it editable and exposable so we can edit it when we spawn our node go back into here where our text block we're going to bind now to our name text and we've done everything we need to inside of here we run this you're still going to have the same thing but it's all going to be blank now why is it blank well look we have a new node here called name text and it's blank so we have a name value i already have here of course it's a string because well that's what i decided to do we'll go ahead and hook it up and we'll hit play again and there we go we have blank for all of our blank ones, we have our names that we've set up, Fireball, Dire Bear, Cold, of course, hard to see. That's, you know, someone with more artistic ability needs to fix that. And you have now dynamically driven, within a few changes, you now have the name showing up. If you want to do things such as a mouse over tooltip, you'd create mouse over tooltips, and then you could dynamically drive that based on all the data. If I can stop clicking on the wrong things. You could dynamically drive all the data from your skills database. Now we have, you know, to show how things are set up and everything's dynamic here, you don't have to show any of this stuff. You could have things created vertically like I showed. I'm showing 12 bars no matter what because that's the number of buttons I've set up. You could design it where it only fills in however many abilities your player has and it doesn't leave any blank spots. Again, personal preference. Let's say I want to get rid of blank there. So we have name text. This one should be pretty simple. Let's go with if. 
And how would we do this? If our name, if our skill value, okay, we'll do a select. This is super, super simple. We're gonna go with a select. Our select is basically gonna fill out what we want based on our input option. And our input option is gonna be an index, which we have here. So if our skill index is zero, there we go. If our skill index is zero, we're gonna return back nothing. So we want our text. So we're gonna want this, this is the text, right? Yep, okay. Bear with me while I figure this one out on the fly. Let's move this over a little bit. Okay. And then we're gonna plug this into here like that. Okay. So the output of whatever we put in here is gonna go here. This one will be option, oh, no, because see skill index. So we're not gonna do, we're gonna have to do a Boolean. So we're gonna change our pin type to a Boolean like that, there we go. And we're gonna pass along this into here if it is, okay, so if it's false, we'll go into there. Like I said, bear with me, this is coding on the fly. And if it's true, we're gonna pass in nothing. We'll do an if statement here. Wow, this thing is, oh, I'm gonna have to rearrange some things horribly, horribly long here. Oh, we don't need to do an if statement, we just do an index here. So if this is equal to zero, bam, just like that. If it's equal to zero, we're gonna pass in this value, which is a blank, to our name text. If it's not equal to zero, that means we have a skill other than our blank skill. It's gonna pass along that. Let's see what happens. There we go. I gotta clean up the code, obviously, but what it's doing is it's determining if it is a blank skill, and it's showing nothing for our picture and nothing for our text. So you have a blank there. We do have technically a widget there. We have our widget with just the border and the hotkey, but it's blank. And of course you could do the same thing if you got really confused by your player, or this text right here is just data driven. It's pulling the index and printing it out. You could do the, run the same thing. Why not, you know what? Why not, this is fun. We'll drive this over here and we'll go to here so if it's if we're going to do this a true false index if it's true we're going to want to do that so we're going to drive this based on our skill index so if our skill index is equal to zero we'll copy these again hey move this down look at all this fun code this is why you make things a mess and then you clean it up there we go if our index is zero uh we're going to want this on false here we go boom so we'll do the same thing here. If our index is zero, as in we don't have a skill assigned to this, we're gonna put nothing for our text at the top. And if we have something there, we're gonna put our index. And there we go, now we have completely blank buttons, just placeholders, we've gone ahead and dynamically created this. I didn't need to alter our, our UMG widget at all. I didn't need to alter the player skills at all. I just designed what we're going to show and it's creating it at runtime. So let's say player has added a new ability and now at seven, we go into our player hotbar and let's say at index seven, they've all of a sudden learned skill two. We hit play. Oh look, now they have acid. That's it. It's all simple, all dynamically driven. Hopefully if you've learned something that, from this. All of this code of course is in the code repository. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit before I commit it, make this a little better. Something like this, maybe collapse it into a, a macro or a f individual function. That way it's a little bit cleaner. And that is going to wrap up our Unreal concept for a dynamic data-driven hotbar.